Hey guys, thanks for joining me back today. And since we are in the spring season, I wanted to do a beautiful flower tutorial. Now mind you, it's not in very springy colors, but I wanted to use this yarn just because of the coloration that I, I did like the color. Um, but this is from a friend and it's her pattern. She's on Ravelry and sh her name is Grace. She allowed me to do her beautiful flower design which she collaborated with a bunch of different ideas from a bunch of her favorite patterns that she likes and this is her pattern that she put together and this is a Japanese flower motif and her blog is would you like yarn with that so that link is below the video in the description box as well as her Ravelry shop where you can find this pattern for free so do follow her there go show her pattern and her blog some love after this tutorial so this is what we are going to be working on today and uh, grab any size hook any size yarn and of course it will make the difference in size and I will let you know what type of yarn and what size hook that I used in just a second so grab everything that you would like to use and I will meet you back okay so for our Japanese flower I am actually just going to use what I have here on hand which is Barocco and I believe they pronounce this Adobe um, this is a four weight yarn and you can use up to a 5.5 millimeter hook and I am just going to use a 5 millimeter um, I don't want the gaps in my stitches to be too spacey so this is part merino wool, uh, or actually this is 100% merino wool. So you can use whatever you like, uh, but I'm not going to concentrate again, as I said on several of my tutorials. Sometimes I think it's uh, uh, more important to concentrate on the pattern itself more than trying to concentrate on color change. Uh, color change doesn't have to be the focal point of each pattern. So once I've taught how to color change in a couple tutorials, I don't need to go back and reteach that every time that there's a color change in a pattern. So as long as you know how to color change, if you're not familiar with how to do that procedure, I do encourage you to go back and read and watch the tutorial on color changing because I will not be color changing for this flower. I'm just going to use the ombre color here okay so if we're just following the pattern miss grace has us starting with a magic loop so just pull up your magic loop okay now once you get your magic loop on your hook what we're going to do is for round one you want to chain up four And then you're going to double crochet, chain one into this ring a total of 10 times, okay? So uh, basically you're just uh, going to ch actually chain up one. So you're going to chain four all together, or four all together here. So that's going to be a double crochet and a chain one. So now we're just going to double crochet, chain one double crochet chain one again so basically you're going to have a, t a total of 12 of these if you count the original chain four and if your loop gets too large on you pull that tail closed and uh, be in spring or having spring in the air which we have a little ice this morning actually I wanted to do a flower tutorial <clears throat> And Miss Grace has this beautiful one that she put together. <laughs> All right, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight so far. So this is going to be nine. Ten. Eleven. And 12 okay 
Now you're just going to join into the first stitch of that chain four. So one, two, three, and four. So join up into that first stitch. Pull that tail closed. You want to close the center up. Okay. Actually, I think she wants us to join into that space. So let's pull that back out. Go into that chain four space up here. And my camera is just a little off this morning. I'm coming out of my camera. I do apologize. All right, so let's go into the space here in between this stitch for a slip stitch. There. Now we have our chain one or our first round. So round two, we want to chain up four. Okay. Now you want to double crochet in the next chain one space and then chain one. So working in the spaces here, you want to double crochet and chain one and double crochet in the next chain one space and chain one. So you want to work that all the way around. So right now we're just working an increase row. Double crochet, chain one. This is one of my favorite yarns to work with. I love Barocco yarns. They have so many different styles. And this is just a beautiful, beautiful color. And make sure that you go to Miss Grace's uh, Ravelry link. It's below this video in the description box and show her some love for her patterns. And she's also got a blog, so that's below the video here too. And I always do my best to support as many artists as I can. It's all about working together. Okay. Now, once you've gone all the way around, you want to join into the beginning chain four space here, just like we did. Okay. And now for round three, we're going to chain up three, and you're going to double crochet in the first chain one space. So basically, um, we're going to work a double crochet right here in this same space. So double crochet. And then you want to chain four. So one, two, three, and four. And you're going to do two double crochet right into the same space. I'm going to pull a little bit of my yarn out here. So you want to do two double crochet right into the same space you're in. All right, and now you're going to do two double crochet in the next chain one space. So right here in this space, you want to work two doubles. And now you're going to chain four. And you want to now do two double crochet into the same space. And you're just going to work that process around. So two doubles into the next space. Chain four. And two doubles into the same space. Basically this is sort of like working a double crocheted V stitch in a sense. Uh, not exactly but similar. So you're just going to work that around. In your next uh, space here, you want to work two doubles. Chain four. And two doubles. Whoops. Let's get in the right space. Okay. And keep going around. And if you read Miss Grace's uh, design technique on this flower, 
she said she just made a collaboration of several different flowers that she's seen she did like and that of course is how all uh, well I can't speak for everyone but I know me personally as a designer myself you get inspiration from so many different um, aspects of life when you're designing patterns and if someone were to tell you oh I, I get them all from just my mind and not from my environment or walking into a store or seeing someone else's pattern I don't think they'd be fully honest with you there because um, you know I walk into a store and I see a cardigan I'm like oh I need to go home and make that into a pattern you know, you know, it's not going to be exactly like like what I've seen in a store because it just can't be. Um, but, you know, you can go home and you can, you know, uh, have that in your mind and say, well, I want to make something similar to that. So that's, that's just how the, the mind frame works when you're designing patterns for any art, whether you quilt or whether you knit whether you crochet, whether you sew, that's just how it works. So when she put the collaboration for this flower together, she just seen a bunch of flowers that she liked and she took, you know, a, a specific stitch from each one, just for example, and put it into this flower. And that's how you design patterns. So I give her credit for that. Okay, so we are still working around here. I think I'm in my last one. Chain my four. Okay, and now what we'll do is join into the top of that beginning chain three that we did. Look how beautiful that is. Isn't that beautiful? And I know it might be a little hard to see with this yarn. All right, our last round is round four. So once you've joined, you want to chain one and single crochet into that same stitch. Now you're going to work into the chain four spaces. And again, this flower is beautiful as it is on this row. But if you do keep going, you put eight double crochet into this chain four space. So that's two three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And now she wants you to single crochet between a second and third double crochet from round three. And I do hope this is correct. I am going to count these as what she's talking about. So one, two, and three. So I'm assuming it's between these here. So let's go with that and single crochet there. And then you're going to do eight double crochet into the next chain four space. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then join again between the second and third with a single crochet, not join, but a single crochet between the two. And you're just going to repeat that all the way around. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Single crochet. And keep working those eight. Uh, 
Uh, and I'm taking it that some of you, if you decide that you want this smaller, you, you can start off with going um, with a smaller hook and a th uh, three weight yarn. And if that is not small enough, you can continue uh, to go with um, a size stitch lower for this pattern that will also work as well. Um, so basically you are just going to keep going around and finish your petals up just that way and then you're just going to join into the top of your single crochet and you'll finish this pattern off. Okay, so again, this is a very simple pattern to do. Um, perfect for spring. Uh, done in spring colors. You can change up the colors to match this for any season. And if you do follow her on uh, her blog, it's... I'm not sure if she, I haven't actually read into it as far as the joining of the motifs together. I'm pretty sure that all you're just going to do what I personally would do is just to take and just simply join into uh, one of the tops of the double crochets and if you want to join as you go then you just make a simple either slip stitch or single crochet and you can join them together not so much as you go but individually but you can join them as you go too and I do have tutorials on how to join as you go so you can actually go back and view that but you will need to contact Miss Grace if you have questions on how to uh, join hers. Uh, she may have a specific way to do that. And I cannot speak for that. But um, since she is the designer, I do recommend you contact her with any of the questions or concerns that you have with the pattern after you have watched the tutorial. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed her Japanese flower motif pattern. And make sure to go show her Ravelry and her blog some love after this tutorial. And thanks for watching, guys, and have a great day and happy hooking.